advisable to just watch on mobile phone, except probably you're unable to, you don't have access to your system. So you probably just want to watch and later go back to YouTube, rewatch and practice. Remember some of these videos are on YouTube, but I always prefer if you're here, because if you're here, you are able to ask questions. And also when you are rewatching it, it's just like you are remembering things, not like you're just encountering it for the first time. Okay, so we, uh, you know, we, we started this class with Figma. Uh, we started with class, this class with Figma. We did the basic uh, Figma uh, interface. We took a look at how to draw rectangles, how to draw shapes, how to draw, uh, how to add frames. We created buttons. We took a look at adding styles, right? We created like style guides. You created typography style, color styles. Um, we took a look at components. We took a look at auto frames. You were able to create components and uh, variables and, uh, sorry, components and variants. And we even went to prototype. We took a look at smart animate and all those stuff. Now, if you are here and some of these things, you still don't understand them. The only way you can understand them is to ask questions. Because by the time we start working, we have already started the UX, right? The UX classes, we've done almost everything, right? By the time you start wanting to develop your ideas, the last thing you want to be an impediment is a tool, okay? Remember, Figma is just a tool. Figma is not what shows if you are a good UX designer or UI designer, right? Figma is a tool, but you don't want that tool to become an impediment to the ideas you have. So that's why sometimes mastering all these tools are important, right? But then you don't master them in three months. Instead, you need to know them to a certain level within this period. Mastering it will take you a lifetime. Because as we are finishing next year, Figma is probably going to introduce something new that you need to learn, right? But then the foundations are very, very important. You need to understand them. So, um, at this point, I'm going to wait again. So if you have any question in all these things I've mentioned, if you have any question, if there's anyone you still don't understand, please unmute your mic and ask so that when we move to this one, it won't be an issue, okay? Any question? During the spending app, we did a lot of things on Figma. If you have any question, please ask. Okay. Uh, no questions, right? Now, all of you that when they say no questions <laughs> and you will not stop. Now, there is, before you can get assigned a capstone project. There is going to be a, a semi whiteboarding session for everyone taking this course, right? Uh, I'm going to watch you design, right? I'll tell you to design something. You have to design it. I'll watch you design. You have to design comfortably. You don't have to be designing under pressure. So you have to be able to ask questions if there are things you really don't understand. Uh, Chiebuka, what's your question? Okay, good evening, sir. My question okay. is, I yeah. just have two questions. One is, I don't know, one is just the dif um, what the difference between converting your design to PNG and the converting to JPEG. What's the difference between that two features? Then another one is on component, Yes, component. You know, in that component too, we have there is one that you said is multiple components, and uh, you didn't actually show us how to work on that one. Like we just practice the one of uh, component set and the uh, normal component. So the other multiple component, how how does it work, or how can we achieve that one? Okay, that's good question. questions. Okay, good questions. Uh, if I get you right, what exactly is component sets and also what's the difference between PNG and JPG? Okay, so I'll take those questions. But first of all, uh, Mr. Festus or Motaya, what's your question before he forgets? 
Okay, first to some with you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Welcome. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I want to ask a question on these uh, three categories prototype, parents. Mm -hmm. Although the third one is uh, the one that Shibuka just okay. mentioned now. Okay. So, I, yesterday that Shibuka has a question on this uh, prototype because I, I was late yesterday. The class almost finished before I joined the class. People can mention of a prototype that yeah. you may mention of that you may you said that uh, the normal prototype we are doing on Figma is quite different from the one that we are going to do on the real life project. So I want to know the difference. Sir. Mm. Okay, I think let me start with that one. Let me clear the air. What Shebuka was asking, it, it was more like prototype, the way Figma used prototype and the real meaning of prototype. So prototype is an English word, okay? Prototype is an English word. When you say prototype, you are talking of something close to a real product, right? That's the first stage, an early sample of a product. Are we together? Yes, sir. That's, let's assume you are not doing, taking any Figma course, and someone asks you, or you come across the word prototype. It's usually the first version or the preliminary version of a product. So let's say you are building, um, you are trying to build a fan. You are trying to develop a uh, design a fan and introduce it into the market. And then you, after your all an analysis, you came up with the design of a fan and you added some features, then you probably go to a factory or you go to China, you manufacture the first one. Now that one is called a prototype. It is not the main product, but it is something very close to the product that you can now show investors and say, okay, we are trying to do something like this, right? If you are trying to start a t-shirt business, uh, although this might not fall into it, but it's just some, I'm looking for something you can actually relate to. If you're trying to start a t-shirt business, uh, you can get one t-shirt, brand it the way you want it, and you can take that t-shirt and meet people. Now that is like prototype. Now it necessarily does not work with things like t-shirt, but I'm just trying to make sure I put it in a way that you understand. So in most place, cases, most people might call it sample in the Nigerian parlance, sample. When they say a sample of something, it's like the prototype, okay? Now, on coming to Figma, when you design, when you create all these frames on Figma, it really doesn't come alive because an app is supposed to be interactive. So it really doesn't come alive. So when you now want it to come alive, like being able to interact with, you know, people being able to interact so that when they click a button, it moves to a certain screen, that is what you use the prototype panel for. So with the prototype panel, you can now add actions. It takes you to different screen, which now makes your design look like the real thing, right? But you know, whatever you are designing on Figma, users can't use them, or except the developer or the programmer comes in and programs it. So what the prototype helps you do is to just create like a mock version of the real app so that people can actually view the interactions between those screens. Do you get it now? Yes, I get your point, sir. It's not, uh, it's not a big deal. But when they ask you what a prototype is, a prototype is the preliminary version of a product. That is what a prototype is. Sorry, sir. Are we using the same tools or different tools? I love the way you mentioned a mention of our terms, uh, terminology that sample we usually use. But mm. are we using the same tools or different tools for that prototype? It's the same. Just use Figma one. Just go to Figma. When you're on Figma and you want to make your app look real, just like we did on Spendy, you come to prototype here. Okay. And prototype it, yes. So that's just the general idea of this prototype. That means connect them together so it, it looks like the real app at those interactions because app and websites must have interactions, right? There are people that even use PowerPoint to design before, before Figma came in. People that didn't have money to get, go and sketch 
or other expensive. You know, there used to be these expensive apps that were used for product design back then. All of them are fo almost folded now because of Figma. And that was why a lot of people were not into product design then, because to enter myself, the payment is wahala you know, to get the software. But Figma came in and then made the whole thing. They created this uh, version they called this, uh, the, the student version, and it was free. Uh, if you don't even want the student version, you can start with saving on drafts, and you can do a lot of things. So they now had a lot of people learning using Figma. So that was how they overtook the market. So yeah. So main, if you are asked anywhere, what is the prototype? It is the initial version of the product. Don't come and tell them it is where you move things around. It is only when it is in relation to Figma. If they ask you what is prototype in Figma, that's okay. when you answer this one, yes. But generally, I just told you what a prototype is. Okay, great. Uh, so welcome everyone. I just said that uh, I'm trying to make sure that we are on the same table. Uh, when you started, when we started this journey, we didn't do any much theory. We head directly into Figma. We started designing, and that is because, like I said, when you start trying to, when you start gathering your great ideas together, the last thing you need, the last thing you want to worry about, it is a tool becoming an impediment. You don't, you want, you have an idea, so you want to bring it out. You don't want Figma to now be the problem. Right, maybe you have an idea of how your card is supposed to look like, but you know, some we use Figma, we don't want that. And since we've started, you've been practicing Figma, we've taken a look at some things like you drawings. Uh, in the course of the spending app, we drew different shapes, we even um, learned how to add background images, add colors, add strokes, uh, add frames, right create uh, auto frames, uh, nest auto frames. We took a look at how to do components, add in variant and all those things, right? So I'm asking again, if you have any question based on all these things, if there is still any way you're having confusion, please let me know now. Because after this, and we've done the UX part practical and we create our first sample end-to-end uh, -end project. Before you'll be handed your final a capstone project there will be a mini um whiteboard whiteboarding session where we are going to watch you design we don't want your hands shaking okay so that's why I'm, i keep repeating this do you have any question is there anything you still find confusing okay so other let me said no question uh victor what's your question Victor, no mistake. Have you raised your hand? Ah, that's not a mistake. Okay, no mistake. Festus, Sir, no question. Okay. Can I go on, sir? Or oh, Victor should go on. Victor, are you here? Yes, sir. How are you, sir? Oh, I can hear you. So, what's your question? All right, sir. My question is based on um the um spacing. I still don't like understand very well the like how the pattern should go for the spacing and the font uh, system, the font as well, sir. That's just my question. Okay, that's a great question. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll answer that. So we have three questions that pending. Okay. Um, the next person. Ah, very good. I'm here, sir. Okay. What's your question? Uh, my question is about the parent and the child, sir. About what? Uh, about parent and child, sir. And okay. I'm somehow using matching them together. Think, for example, I have a frame now. And I want to put in the child. Or uh, okay, let me just let me just go straight like this. Uh, a component, component set. I want to put a child inside the component set. I'm still having issue with it. I've been battling with it since morning, over like three or two four hours today. Okay, brother, don't worry. 
<laughs> okay. Okay. That's uh, that's a good question. So uh, let's go in and answer all these questions. So the first one, what is the difference between PNG and JPG? Now, this is a very important question because when you start exporting your assets, you no longer fall your hand. Now, PNG means portable network graphics. Um, there's no two way to uh, Q slash A. Portable network graphics. Now, I'm not saying if you don't know the meaning of PNG, your own is finished. No, your own is not finished. You can quickly go do a Google search of what is PNG. And uh, I think JPEG is Joint Photograph Exchange Graphics. That's JPEG. Knowing it is not going to help you in any way. Uh, it's, it will only make you sound cool. You know, the way I'm saying it, you could be like, ah, this person has experience. See, yes, it's a big name, so this thing. But it does not help you get a job. It just helps you sound cool. Now, PNG is a kind of image that saves the alpha channel. Now, what we mean alpha channel simply means that it preserves transparency in an image. Okay. So when you have an image, for instance, uh, let me draw, let me draw this box. Okay. You can see that this box right now, let me also draw an ellipse. Um, let me give it a color red. Okay. Let me give this a color red. You can clearly see that these two images now, okay? Who is this? You can clearly see that these two images, okay? This square. Anytime you are rendering or exporting an images, Images are always exported in square and rectangular shapes. There are no cylindrical images. All images are rendered in square and rectangle because all your devices, that is the aspect ratio they have. From your, from your TV to your phone, to your monitor, to your computer, they all have square and rectangular shapes so any image you are exporting they are exported in that aspect ratio now here is the thing if you take a look at these two images if i should export them because this one let me give it a color so you can see it you can clearly see that this rectangle has a background color this circle also have a background color who started this code now, if you export this as either PNG or JPG, you won't notice the difference. The only difference you probably notice is that if they are shapes, if they are shapes, PNG will probably give you a higher, higher quality, right? But if it's an image, you probably want to go with JPEG. When you take a picture on your phone, they are defaultly says that JPEG, right? Now. Now, if you, okay, sorry, my network went over and back. Where you begin to notice a visible difference is, let me duplicate this. When you have this as no fill, now watch, I'm removing the color, okay? Minus, or let me just turn it off. You can see that right here, we don't have a color. This rectangle, there's no color here, no fill, no color. Okay, let me just do minus. You can see fill, no fill. Now, if you export this, if you still export the two of them, let me group them so that we know exactly what we're doing. If you export these two now as a JPEG and PNG, PNG is going to preserve the transparency. That means if you export it as a PNG, you see this empty space is going to be preserved. But if you export this same thing as a PNG, is going to automatically convert, add a background to these empty spaces. And by default, the color is always white. Oops. The color is always white by default, okay? So you find out that those empty spaces, JPEG is going to add white to it. So you can see that the difference is basically in preserving the transparency. 
So uh, let me show you the difference again. If you export this one, this particular one, the white will be preserved. So this is going to be PNG, right? PNG, while this one is going to be how it will be exported as JPG. Now, sometimes all this explanation, especially if you are just starting, it does not make sense until you are told how to use it. Okay. Now, when you are designing your, when you are creating your designs, if there are images that have transparent background, the best thing to do is to export them as PNG so that their background can be what preserved. Okay. If you have some certain images, Okay, if you have some certain images where you've created like whole punches and some special effects to give it like a negative background, make sure you export it as PNG. Okay, but if it's just a picture, a complete picture, just go ahead and export it as JPG. But if it's a picture that has a form of transparency around it, it could be logo, although your logos for vector graphics. If they are vector graphics, it's best exported as SVG. That one is scalable vector graphics, SVG. Now, when we get to uh, wrapping up your, preparing your file for developers, you understand how to export all these things. But I'm, I'm just trying to explain it ahead of time. So PNG preserves transparent, transparency in any image. But JPG will always, if you have any transparent image, uh, uh export as jpg is going to is going to add white to it so if i should select just this circle and export as png it will take note of this alpha uh, this transparent uh, sections it will not it will not involve them it will not it will just preserve it but if i select only this circle self and then export it as jpg you see all these empty black spaces is going to add white to them uh, Chiebuka, do you get now? Okay. Now, the second question is, um, what is components, uh, components, multiple components? Now, remember, if you are creating, let's assume in these things I've created here, I want them to become a group of components. That's a component with different variants. I can select all of them, okay? Let me duplicate. If I want these things to become a group of components, I can select all of them, go to components, and say, create component set. okay? Create component set. What this will basically do is, it will create a component and set one as the main component, this one as a variant, and this one as another variant. That is a component set. So they are one component. You can see, you can see we have only one purple with component one. But let's assume in everything here, I when I was designing them, what I have in mind is that all of them, they are going to be separate components. What I can do is to come here, select, go to this one and click on create components, right? So let me duplicate this. Remember, I want these things to be multiple components. I select it and click create components. Then I come to this one, create components. Then I come to this one, create components. If this was my goal, it's going to take me a long time if I had more of this. Instead, what I could just do is to select all of them, even if they are 100, and I'll come here and choose create multiple components. Now you can see automatically it has created one, two, three, right? It's basically the same thing I did here, but that thing is just there to save you one more step, right? Instead of you wasting time converting multiple elements to components, you just select it, select all of them and click on create multiple components. Okay. Um, do I have anyone wanting to join? Okay, nobody. Okay, so let me delete this now. And let's go to spacing. Okay, parent, child. Uh, if you want to understand parent child, you start with a frame. If you draw a frame, okay, a frame on Figma, you take a look at here. So we are going to call this frame one. Now, anything you add inside frame one, like this circle, becomes a child 
of frame one. You can clearly see that from this structure, if I collapse this arrow here, you can see that the ellipse is inside. If I click on it, it opens up, you see the ellipse. Now, if I drag this outside, it is no longer a child of this frame. You can see that they now have equal alignments, right? There's nothing inside again. But when I drag it in, it becomes a child of this. Now, even this one, inside this avia, another avia could be inside. Like if I draw another frame on top of this one, automatically frame one becomes a child of frame two. So you can see, so if you keep, <laughs> so go and ask and copy. <laughs> oh my god now you can see that right now we have frame one now inside inside frame two right so this is what we mean by the parent child relationship right now this frame two if you add another frame on top of it maybe you draw a frame and then you now have this inside they automatically become children of frame three so this is what you basically call nesting. Okay, someone said I should let them in. I can't see them again. Requests. Okay. Anyway, Avia is not English. I don't know. Naturally, Poppy Talker. I don't know anything. But I'm just trying to say you can see that inside this frame three, there's another child inside that is holding another child that is holding another child element. So most of the times when you convert like let's say you convert this to a component let's create a component out of this now let's go in and drag in the assets uh where is it on q and a let's drag in that asset let's assume in this particular component eventually gives uh, needed a, an extra element right here okay an extra element what you can do you might draw it out okay what i like doing sometimes is to draw it out because most of if you draw it out and sometimes depending on the structure of your plant, it might not just enter easily like this. So you can draw it out, okay, or whatever it is. This could be another component or another design entirely or another um, variant entirely. I can just cut it, come inside here, select it and paste. So you can now see if I paste it, automatically it will enter this other one, right? but the issue most people have sometimes is this okay you have this um let me duplicate this now and let me detach this from the instance let's change this color and let's do blue and then this is a component of its own you cannot put this component okay inside this component okay so if you come in here you find out that it's having some conflict. You can see that you can't find that component fully. So that's the issue most people have. It will instead paste it as just a normal variant. You won't find that component like that. So when you try to paste a component inside another component, it basically converts it into a component, sorry, into a variant. So you can't have two components forming one component one must be a component and the other one is variant. okay and anytime you want to add additional stuff or adjust it you have to go back to the parent component and then adjust it so if i come in here and adjust this you can see it has also adjusted right there okay so i hope you get a better understanding now so this is what we call the parent child relationship also if you have a component like this, okay, you see this component, um, you can't, okay, Festus, okay, Festus, what's your question? Sir, what if we, if, what if we have added an auto layout? Yeah, it's the same thing, it's the same thing. Auto layout and frame is just the same thing just that with auto layout things um things are arranged dynamic uh, dynamically automatically it's the same process Cut and paste inside the frame yes the only thing is that if one of the auto, if one of your let's say your auto, your your frame has an auto layout that is a variant okay 
So I think I understand what you are asking. So you have something like this, an icon, okay? And you are following atomic principle for your design. This particular icon is a component, okay? And then you came in, you dragged this icon here, and then you typed something and say, hello, it's me, okay? And um, let me just increase this anyhow. Now let me delete these two things. And then you selected these two, add them in an auto frame again, because you are trying to create a button, right? Yes. Uh, yes. So you converted this, after doing this, you converted these to a component, okay? Now, if you have this variant, okay, and you are trying, maybe this button now, you decide to add a strat thing here where you have the icon, it's not going to work. So if, if you say maybe you want to change this now and you are trying to bring it inside here, inside this icon space, it's not going to work, okay? If you're also trying to put it right here, inside this variant, it's not going to work, right? If I do cut now and select this, you can see it's not going to work because this is uh, an instance. So if you want to do any changes, if it is on the main button, you have to come back to the parent frame. That means I can come back to the parent frame, select it and paste it. So you can see it appears here. But if it is for this icon, nothing can be done. You have to go back to this other one. So you select this, you have to come back here and paste for you to have it, right? But if what you are just trying to do is to swap this icon to another icon, then you can use what you call component swap, right? So you can create some icons that goes together so that whichever one you are, if you are using here, you can see if I select up to this particular circle, you can see right here, I see that this is what, uh, okay, I've not created it. I've not created the component swap. But if you select this, you can see where, where we have these uh, options where you can swap these components. So I can swap, like if I click this, it will change to this, component, but I don't know how to do that, so you know, you know spoil, you know go spoil. We did something like this when we were designing spending, right? When we, did, when we were designing spending, we did something like this. That was how we were changing the icons. So just note that if you have an instance as part of another component, if you want to change anything on that one, you have to go to the source. You can't change it here, okay? So someone says, sir, can you explain Boolean properties in general? Uh, Boolean properties is just a way of organizing your design, okay? Organizing your components. Now, to understand Boolean properties, you have to understand how we were designing before, okay? So I'm just going to take this component. We are going to assume this is a button, okay? So before, before now, if you drag out this button, and you want to edit this hello, it's me. You have to manually go inside and say, how are you? Okay, you have to manually click and edit inside. If I wanted to hide this, if I wanted to hide this, maybe this particular instance, I don't need to see this other icon. I'll manually have to select it, then go to my layer and click on the eye icon and hide it. Well, Figma noticed that uh, a lot of people were complaining, not like we were complaining that it's like it's killing us, but it's just not intuitive enough. Imagine if you have like a large component and you are going inside to click and then hide, all of a sudden you want it, you have to go back. Imagine if you have so many layers, you have to now expand the layers one after the other and start looking for those particular elements to either switch them on or off or edit them. So Figma now introduced the Boolean properties to help us, to allow us have them as what a property on this sidebar. So we can easily edit or turn them on and off. But then you have two types. You have the Boolean properties for text element and then layer element. Layer element basically is for shapes. So you have the one that you can use to control shapes and layers. And then you have the one you can use to control text. So if you want to create a Boolean property out of this now, it's just to select, okay? Then you can come in here 
and maybe it's for this text this text since this is a text right you have to look for the text panel so you can see right here you can see on the text panel you can see this box that say hello it's me you can see right here it has what you call what create text property now if you take a look at layer layer also has its own that says create boolean property okay most people get confused maybe when they want to do for this hello it's me they mistakenly come to layer and click this and then they will not say it's not showing be careful because you have to be very observant okay so you can see they have the same icon so they can confuse you sometimes know that this one is for layer 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 means this particular place now all these things are layers you know the way figma works when you draw an object it stacks it stands on the layer and it keeps stacking on top of each other okay so if what you want to control is this layer then you use this if you want to control is the text that's the content use this but remember for shapes shapes no get content shapes only have what layers shapes no get content so it won't work for uh shapes okay and also if you notice right now if i select this one i'm not seeing those guys that's because this is my instance so let me come back here so for shapes shapes only have what layer they don't have the text because it's not a text so if it is a text you can come in here and click on this under the text property you click on what create text property now it's going to ask you what name should we put this so i can call it any name but use your sense i can call this input okay and then the default value hello it's me and i can say create property now you can see it has created an input property so when next i select this variant i can clearly see the input here so instead of me directly editing this i can just type in hello world okay hello world now you can see if i type it here and click enter it will change easily i don't have to manually come in here it is not compulsory but it just helps to show that you are organized okay now what of this one that we able to control i can select this one now you can see there's no text for it it only has layer i click on it and i can say name for this name i can say right icon or leading whatever leading icon right icon okay and value true or false true means it is visible false means it's not visible okay booleans can only have two value true or false so on and off just consider them as on and off okay so i click on create property now if i come back and select this i now have that boolean property right here you can see it's currently off if i turn it on it comes back if i turn it on you can see this is more intuitive to control this variant than to manually go in and hide things so if i even select this one uh i can also come in here and create it and then create new property okay and say left icon true so if i select this now i have right icon left icon and i have those inputs so i can easily turn on and off on and off do you get it now yes that's what they are yes to hide or reveal in terms of, in term, in terms of text to edit the text it's just helpful it just helps you organize things so you don't have to manually come inside these uh layer panels to be editing things okay miriam what's your question yes sir good evening sir so does that good mean evening. for someone to be able to like create that booming effect uh, we must convert to a uh, component first yes. Yes, if you don't convert to components, you nobody know, will even see them. So if I draw a normal circle, where then they? They know they. They know they. You know they. So it's only when you are working with a component that you can create pooling properties. Okay. So the second to the last question, you're welcome. Someone said um, spacing fonts and then uh, spacing and fonts. Well, there is nothing much to talk about when it comes to spacing. Just first of all, define the spacing you want to use. 
do you want to move from two to four? Just have a reading. Do you want to move two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, like that? Okay. Or you want to move five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. Okay. You are basically you are the one defining this. Nothing, not nobody send you. Or you want to move, sorry, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. I'm just adding plus, 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 right? Twenty plus four, twenty-four, twenty-four plus four, twenty-eight, twenty-four, thirty-two, like that. Or you want to do eight. 8 plus 8, 16, 16 plus 8, 24, 24 plus 8, 32, 32 plus 8, 40. Or do you want to do 1, 2, 3, 4? Don't do that, okay? Don't do that. Just have a reading. Now, when you have this reading, okay, if I decide, okay, I want to go with this one or this one, this might probably start with 2, then 4, then whatever you want, okay? But choose one with a reading choose one with a reading so that it will be easier for the developers to implement one of the popular one is this particular one that doesn't mean you must use it but this one is one of the most popular ones followed by this but in large systems in large systems they use this in large systems okay now it's always good to use numbers that are divisible by two reason why you use numbers that are divisible by two they always look more balanced okay they always look more balanced when you use numbers that are divisible by two now what is saying here is if i'm using either this or this the smallest unit of spacing is usually spacing between icon and text that's the smallest unit you are likely going to see so that means if i have an icon here if I have an icon here, okay, let's be more realistic. Okay, let me just do If I have an icon here and I have a text here, okay, my text. If I have an icon and I have a text here, if I put this here, you can clearly see with your God given mind that if I put this, it doesn't make, it's not given. There's this space. So what I can do is to start with my list spacing. In this Let's use four. Okay. I can start with my list space to say I want to give the this, I want the space between this and this to be four. So I can move this, hold down my alt, and then check here. You can see it's 475. This is actually this is actually big. Anyway, let me use auto layout shift A and let me use four. So now I have spacing. Let me just reduce this. This extremely big for what I what we are trying to do. Um, okay, 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 okay. Let me zoom in. Let me be more realistic. Let's go ahead and use for this. Let me just make it thirty two, okay. And for this text, let's go ahead and make it sixteen. Sixteen twenty four, okay. So you can see right now, I'm using four as a spacing between this icon and the text. Now, four, okay? Okay, so you can see it. Now, if I want to group, if, if this is a group, let me add a fill here. Let me change the color of this one. Now, of course, this is an auto layout. I might want to add some padding. Now, because I'm using four, take notes, because I'm using four, eight, and the rest of them, if I want to do padding, I can't come here and type 11. Okay? Instead, you want to use either four, or if you don't want to use four, you move to the next one, which is eight. If you think four is too small, move to the next one, which is eight. If you think eight is too small, move to the next one, which is 12. 
until you get that balance you are looking for okay if you think 12 is too small move to the next one which is 16 be incrementing uh, incrementing it by four then you come here you can now do eight and you can say okay this is my button now when it comes to space between if it is a single item just leave it as zero oops sorry four they are like this they are the argument now if i want to group these two if i now have two of them now and i want to group them you can see the space between this and this is seven i don't want to do this because seven is not part of our grouping instead i'll move it down one more to be eight if i fit their two jam packs i want to move down to what 12. so this is how you implement anywhere you have spacing in your design maintain the maintain that consistency i don't want to look at your design and in some places i'm seeing four in some places i'm seeing 10. in another place i'm seeing 13. a lot of you most times a lot of you especially when using uh when using uh what's it called when using auto frame some of you just select item you do shift a and you move forward so you don't do that when you do shift a always check out those settings okay to make sure uh you have those numbers i hope you really understand now i hope you understand now when it comes to fonts don't worry about fonts okay don't worry too much if you know sabi just maintain what figma has given you uh, if you take a look at figma here you can see the font scale you have these numbers but if you go with these numbers uh i think this other guys current draw has a better font scaling by default but take a look at the way the font is scaling after 16. if you notice from 16 you have 20 from 20 you have 24 24 you have 32. it's almost the same with the spacing we just talked about they were just adding four eight eight uh, four eight so maintain maintain one now how do you scale on digital screens mobile and uh, desktops the base fonts usually goes with 16 okay um base font uh let's see uh, i'm trying to see if you can uh apple no carry me go nigeria or no carry me go but you go they will take me to nigeria You see? No, I don't want Nigeria. Okay. okay. <laughs> anyway, now, uh, what I'm looking for is not really here. I want a font. Let me go to CNN. I want a website with uh, a lot of text so we can see what I mean. Okay. Now, when you're on CNN, you notice different sizes of fonts. Now, these different sizes are used to draw attention, okay? They are used to draw attention or signify importance. They are not just joking with it. But amidst all these things, there is this one called the base font or the body font. That body font, it is, is this one. You see these ones? You see these ones? Now then be all this. Now then be body fonts. You see all of them? These ones. Now then be body fonts. They are the most, that's the main font for that particular app or website. Now, a lot of websites and apps use 16 for it. They use 16 for it. Okay. That means after you've had the 16, you can either go up or down. Now, for something as important as the main headline, you can see they've used a bigger font right here. For something that is like caption for other uh, news, they've used a smaller one right here. So you are able to see this, then see this. Now, if you, if you take a look at other smaller, non-important ones, but also they want you to notice them, they are the ones like these small top stories featured, right? Uh, if you keep going, you are going to see different, different typography scale. You can see this one here. These are for credits. 
you can see since credits are not really that important but they are extremely important but nobody goes to a website to say a hey, who whose credit who is credited with this picture right you can see the way they've made it tiny right there so that it will not clash with this so what we are saying is if your text is now 16 okay 16 usually it's always 16 regular or medium okay it's usually regular or medium you can't use semi bold for your body copy i beg it's either regular or medium now um although the only place you can use you are to use semi bold is on apple why do i always forget the name that is I, I, I glass now because i know get them that's why i always forget the name i don't give myself hypertension by knowing the name and i don't have it <laughs> you know that uh, uh, apple vision pro if you are designing for that device uh they are they recommend that instead of using medium use semi bold then instead of semi bold use bold yes so vision pro so that's the only place where you have this exception but or some fonts there are some fonts that are just tiny by nature so if it is too tiny you go with the, uh, the semi bold version okay but usually you want to use regular and semi bold so if this is my my body font if i want to represent a a heading that is directly for this i can now increase this by four okay by four or eight let's do by four 16 plus 4, 20. I can go ahead and make this one maybe bold. So you can see these two, you can see the relationship between 1 and 2. Okay. There are a lot of ways you could scale. We uh, we did this thing in the first uh, class, the typography class. So you might want to go back and take a look at that website you can easily use for scaling. But sometimes going to those websites can be a waste of time. So if you just know how this is related, you can make this uh yes 56 is okay some people go as much as 762 myself depend on the font and the content okay so now the next heading after this one if there is should you can now make 28 just to click, click create that clear hierarchy now if there's anyone below this one you can go as low as 14 then you can also go as low as 12. But never in the history of your design career use anything less than 10, okay? There are some that you might use nine, but please leave them at 10, leave them at 10. If you are using nine, just know that maybe something like that photo credit I just showed you, but just know that you might have like the issues. Let it be something that is not very, very, very important. But the main body is always six, uh, this 16. Okay. In some devices, it's 17. Now, again, please and please, if you don't know a typography scale to use when designing, don't go and just be joking around. Okay. Use the system defined ones. The system defined ones. Uh, I think there was a class where we gave you link to Apple own, and we also gave you link to uh, Android own, right? And other ones. So use the system defined ones. So go to them, take a look at what font size are they use, using for this type of um, a heading. You pick it, you use it. Nobody will kill you. A lot of apps use system components. Okay. Okay. I think I've been able to answer most of the questions. So let's go into today's business. But I uh, hope you understand better now. The person that asked this question, I forgot your name. I didn't take my name. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I know you will still forget, but the, the video will be on YouTube. You can always come back and watch it and understand better. But it's all about practicing. Just know that whenever you are designing, there should be no ab arbitrary space in your design. So if you are designing for a mobile phone and you are using iPhone 13 mini, no matter what, don't just come and drop something. Maybe you are designing, you just come and drop something here. And then you do another one and drop something here. No, don't do this. Make sure there is a uniform spacing. So what you can now do is to make sure the space between here and here is what? You can see it's 25. That means something is going on. You make it 24. Now you can see this one is 45. What you can do is to maybe reduce this one by one inch. So you can go to width. 
and you might do 306 minus 1. Okay, now if I check it again, I have 24 and I have 46. 46 does if you are using four, four, four multiples of four, right? 46 doesn't fall in. Instead, we are looking at either 44 or 40 or 48. So what you can now do is under width, uh, width, I can add plus two here. Oh. So you can actually do multiplications directly here. Okay, so you have this at 24 and 44. Then you have uniform spacing now difference between this and this you make sure you measure you can see it's 15 it's off make it six now there are times whereby you might need all these uh, numbers that are odd depending on what you are doing but for now please don't do that so you check here 14 14 does not work 14 does not enter so depend if you that, let's assume you are not using margin just make it 16 okay and from here 53 increase it small like 43 increase it more again 38 does not work let's uh 32 and 40 let's add two here plus two so okay 38 and uh, this is supposed to be uh 16 okay 16 and 36 let's increase here plus five plus two so 14 15 16 uh, let me increase this 24. Okay, 24. So this works. So you can see how uh, the spacing is following each other. Okay, uh, Roy, what's your question? Okay, sir. Uh, concerning this thing that you just did now, this spacing, at times when okay. I'm when I'm when I'm designing, particularly because whenever I want to design for that mobile, I use that first apple this thing frame. I've forgotten the yeah. size. So but when I, for example, now when I want to check my sizing, I will see that at times, at times, if I centralize it now, one part may be giving me 98, and the left will be giving me 99. So that difference of one, I, I don't really know, can, can we match it like 98.5, <laughs> then the other one 98.5, so that <laughs> in, in, in rare cases you do that, in rare cases, but at this stage, don't do it. What you're probably missing is because probably use 32, okay, use 32, but Apple's margin is 24, right? So always check, always check. So if you go, to, if you are designing and if you know that this app I'm designing is for iPhone, there are some guidelines to follow for iPhone. So follow it so that everything will match. All of them, you already have access to the links. So you check it and check Apple spacing and then use it. Okay. Uh, let's proceed to what we have. Although we still talk about uh, when you choose your device, how to con uh, how to actually follow those set up rules by Apple and the rest. So let's go into what we have for for today. So today we are going to take a look at uh, Figma 2.0, right? I'm just going to show you how to use them and then you on your own, you have to practice further, okay? So the first thing we want to take a look at now is the mask tool. So we've not taken a look at this tool because the likelihood of you using it is not that high, but it's important you know there are some times you might just want to use it, okay? You can use it. I'm not saying you will never use it. You are likely going to use it, but it's not like something you use in every project. Maybe every project you want to hide something, but it can help with your increasing your creativity. So the mask tool is basically used to mask a part of an object. So uh, I, I have this image I pasted here. Okay um so let's paste this image here okay let me just duplicate it now with a masking tool you can select parts or crop out part of this image using any shape you want okay whatever it is you want to use for a masking needs to be under the shape you are looking at so let's go here and pick the star shape and then let's draw our star and although this will not work but i just want to use this to show you and i'm going to drag this right on top of this and select the two of them and here is the mask tool so you can just say use mask 
oops, sorry, use mask. And now you have this picture. Where is that picture? Okay, I selected this old picture before. So use mask. Now I was selecting this second picture earlier instead of that most of it. So you can see that right now we've been able to hide this image right inside this shape. Exactly. So if you use a coral draw, it is called power clip. If you use Illustrator or Photoshop, it is called clip masking. Okay. If you have not used anyone before, it is called mask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you can see the image is basically inside that star shape now. So in case you want to create this kind of uh, stuff, you can just do that. They can add ah, ah, this guy, don't they creative? Uh, so another thing, people use it for animation, maybe all those loading animation. You might want maybe your animation to, this should be here. And then when it's loading, you just do blue, 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 whatever that sound effect is. But you can see you can use this for animation, some sort of animation. Also, people use this for when they want to create text animation, you know, when they want to do some some text animation to show that they've learned Figma well. My animation, text animation. Okay, so text animation, they can have a text here. Oh, it was actually inside that mask. Let me type it again text animation okay so they have text animation what they can do now is to get a, a rectangular mask if you want it circular you can get a circular mask depending on how you want it so for this let's go with a circular ellipse so they draw it out okay they draw it out and right here remember you want to take this to under you select the two of them you mask and now this can now move in like this you can animate things like this you can see it you can animate maybe you say on mouse hover may you just animate things the other way around okay but if what you want is for the text to be inside the circle you have to bring the text down okay so depend on how you want it so now the ellipse moves with the text this way these two they are different it depends on the one you want to move around okay now that is for the masking and when you are masking you can actually add blood to it you can still add effect you can come in here now add an effect effect okay and uh, let's say layer blur let's increase this to like 50 and you can see, let's make it 400. Because it's quite large. You can see right now that we are having this kind of soft light effect that you can easily maybe just, uh, you know. And don't forget, you can also make it grow in your animation. Maybe your animation, you just make this a little bit bigger, okay? And then let it grow this way to review this other guy. Just let it grow that way. You can see okay so you can use this to do some certain uh animations so let me just do a simple animation for you to actually see what is going on here so for this one now this mask group hide i can call it hide uh let me select these two and align them properly uh align them properly but then okay i'm going to just leave it like this now let me select this and make it um Okay, let me move away this. Let me hide it completely. Okay. Now I'm going to select this, convert to a component, and then create a variant. And on this variant, this guy is going to grow to review everything. Okay. He's going to grow to review everything. 
Then I select the two of them now, and I do the normal quick prototyping, and I'll say, let's say on click, let's just use on click. Uh, instead of instance, let's go ahead and use smart animate, okay? And let's select this one too, and say when you click on it, let me select this and add the there, so they'll be spacing. Let me space them well, 50, okay? So when we select this one, we also want to click here. We also want to select and move to this one, okay? So let's go ahead and get a frame to test this out. Let's go ahead and pick the, the high test. Now, obviously, you won't see anything, right? You are not going to see anything. Let me change the color to black. Okay, you won't see anything, but let's go ahead and test it out. Preview. So it's loading. So please, you, I'm going to, we are doing exercise that one. So it's not look and look and look and look. So after this, we are coming out on Figma to try it out. So if I click now, if I click, you can see, click. You can see that kind of animation right there. Okay, you can see we're able to achieve it using the mask tool. You can see it's not just going on and off. If you look well, you can see it's not just going on and off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before you say, ah, maybe to turn on and off. No, it's not that, that's is that swoosh effect right there. So for now, uh you are going to pick this picture and you are going to add uh, uh right, what is it? Okay. So, when we when we are masking yes the the object we want to hide yes like the one we don't want to see yes. will it be at the back of the uh, yes okay the one we don't want to see will be at the mm. back yes okay the okay mask. okay we must the one we want to see will be at the front okay. yes so you can see the the object let me name them well the object and the mask you can see the picture is the object and the the one we're using to crop it out is the mask which is under okay so everyone come on on figma now duplicate this picture and create this circular mask i'm waiting for you guys you have Five minutes. Duplicate or no carry the picture. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are like twelve here. Please let's go to Figma. Let's go to Figma. Which which uh, page? Says, which page? I'm on uh, the advanced UI. Advanced UI. So coming there. Uh, let me change it to Figma two point zero. Sigma 2.0. You can also check the pinned message on Google Meet so that you can use the link to go directly to uh, the Figma file. Remember, the one, the main object will be at the top, the mask will be at the bottom. Okay, for that, no problem. But make sure when you get home, make sure you practice. This is not a podcast. I know my voice is good for podcasts, but this is not a podcast. <laughs> so make sure once they bring light or once you get home, make sure you practice. That's the only way you get better, okay? I've given you guys different scenarios of when you can use masking, okay? So just make sure the one, the object is on the top while the mask is at the bottom. Who is this one that have drawn circle that is bigger than waiting one mask? Eh? <laughs> oh my God. Eh? You won't hide something. You feel like you won't you won't use Ghana must go cover three story building. How will it be possible? You will not notice anything now. <laughs> oh. 
Nah, I, I don't know if I'm lost too. I don't know. Which of is it not this stream two five you are in? Sir? Yes, not the guided access file though. The one with no. the blue cover. Yeah, the one with the blue cover. Which uh, which which page? Is this Saturday or grid and animate or cover? Go down, Figma 2.0. You go another place, they look for us. Ha. Scroll Figma. down to Figma 2.0 after page eight. Okay, okay. Just imagine. <laughs> do this circle, draw this ellipse. I don't want to see rectangle. Let's do the same thing. Let me be sure you guys know what I know what you are doing before you can do your own stuff. Repeat this thing. Repeat this. Add this image inside here. Make sure you are copying the image. You're not duplicating. Uh, don't. Who carry my own? Who carry my this thing? Who carry the ribbon? Who carried this one? <laughs> who carried that, uh, the one I did? Who deleted it? I go soon pursue on for here now. You have to take this image and make your, and add your, your, what is the color? Your mask to create this, to create this. So this ellipse, you use the ellipse too, not rectangle. Omotayo, do you have a do you have issues? Are you getting it or you're not getting it? If you're not getting it, ask question now. Why haven't tell me tell me? Okay. Why haven't why is it only tell me that I've done it? I'm not getting it. That's why I said you should recap your example. I sent a message that you should recap your example. Just imagine Hello. since seven since seven nineteen. How do you I'm on Figma? You want me to have ten eyes. Eh? When you could have unmute your mic. Now see, look at go to Google Meet and take a look at the structure. The structure is the most important thing you need to understand. This picture, we want to add it in a circular mask. Okay. So we have the picture, which is the object then draw the mask on top of it then you change it the mask should be under so i'm going to repeat it again so i hope you're on google meet yes so that since is this not is done, but it's not like oh no well, it, does, it does not do that so if this is the picture okay i want to draw my ellipse if i draw my ellipse you can clearly see my ellipse is not bigger than the picture, okay? We have to do things with the fear of God and common sense. Now, <laughs> don't go and draw a circle that is bigger than waiting one mask. You will not see the effect. Now, if you take a look at the structure of this one, two, okay, let's add them in a frame so that we can understand. Let me add these two in a frame. Now, if you see one, let me say this, my frame, design gate. Okay, so put your own in a frame so it's easier for you to understand. If you take a look at this picture, you can see that this picture is under the ellipse five. What you want to do is to drag this ellipse five to be under the picture first. Then you select the two of them, select the ellipse from the layer panel, hold down shift, select the picture. Once you do this, you come here and select use mask, and there you go make sure the ellipse or whatever you want to use for the mask is under the picture itself and you, remember you can also mask shapes right not just picture and shapes so try it now so get the frame okay uh -huh. so Amotaya, get that frame don't worry let's do this don't worry let me delete this oh yeah let me get a frame for you 
let me get a big frame for you. Okay, I'm not tired. Okay, I'm not tired. Okay, now go ahead, pick the ellipse too, and draw the circle. Make sure you make the circle perfect. Draw the circle. Circle, not yam. Uh huh. <laughs> Now, from the layer panel, make sure the circle is under the picture. You can just drag it down. Okay. Now, select the two of them. Select the ellipse and then the picture, not the whole frame. The ellipse and the picture. Make sure uh, just the ellipse and the picture, Motaya just the ellipse and the picture you can do that from the you can do that from the yeah now go that. awesome so it's just simple now the reality is you come tomorrow you forget but the main thing you should remember is whatever it is you want to use and create that mask should be under the one you want to hold okay right now this picture is inside the circle use that to understand this picture if i move this picture around you see it is inside the circle so whatever you want to want to put inside consider the mask in the bag and whatever you want to put inside should be on top you can mask with any shape you can mask with anything now i can also come in here and let's do uh I'm trying to get a picture. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm trying to get a picture, guys. So let me show you something. So you can also do this. I'm dragging in this wave here. Okay, uh, if you take a look at this now, you can see I've dragged in a, uh, some kind of wave backgrounds. Okay, now, watch, go back to Google Meet, guys. Let me type something. uh could be let me type this now i want this image okay to be inside could who can tell me the placement of this image i want i don't want could inside the image I want this image inside Kudi. So between Kudi and the image, which one should be on top? The image. Awesome. Right, now when I ask question, you won't ask question. I know, okay, now, oh, Tizaba. Tizaba, what is your question? Now I ask question, now you won't ask question. So like you say, now nah, wait till no, I ask the question. Okay, you're answering. Okay, it's correct. I think they only were like one of my friends for school. Once they just ask question at that time, you raise hand up. Once they say, What is your eh? Hey, once they say, What is the question? You say, I was just about to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> so, because we want this image inside Kudi, the image will be on top. So, we select the two of them. So, you can see now that the image needs to be on top. Then we'll select the two of them and use mask. So you can see right now, I can go ahead and do something like this. And if someone wasn't here, they will be like, ah, ah, how did they create all this color inside this text? If I ever want to confuse my enemies for that, I select that image, add effect, and add some layer blur to it, and then make it very smooth with at 100. And they say, oh, well, this gradient is too much. Ah, this gradient is nice. How did you do that gradient? So, well, I didn't do anything much. I just created it. Okay. 
So I can go ahead and select my Kudi text and move things around. So depend on how you want it, okay? So this is how you move things around. If you want the 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 image, the Kudi inside the image, you just swap the direction. It's always like that, okay? Okay, any questions? So this is the, uh, the inverse of it. Let me see, okay. Any question? Pestus, what's your question? So is it most important to come and uh, drag it on this layer panel? Can't we just select at once and do the use marks? No, it depends on which one you put first, right? So if you put them accordingly, you can always select them and do use marks. But you know, sometimes you might draw a particular shape first. So I'm just trying to make you understand the structure. So that before you complain that it's not working, check the structure from the layer panel. All right, sir. Okay. So like I said, you use these things once in a while. Uh, there are some cases where you use them, not always often, okay? So the next thing we want to take a look at now is can we, can, the shape. Can we mask more than, more than two objects? Start with one, start off. <laughs> and yes, you can. <laughs> You can, but start with one. <laughs> Please, sir. Uh, okay. Before you go further, sir, can, okay. you, re can you redo the uh, animation of that text that you did the other time? No, 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 no. I cannot redo the animation. The animation is basically the same thing, okay? You have one. Uh, so let's assume in you have this. So what I can do, imagine this circle now, this ellipse. Let me give it the same color the same color here okay i can move uh let me move this around okay i can let me group this too i'm working on that your uh, distance let me do grouping okay let me convert to yeah. okay let me duplicate it let me convert this to components okay now on this one let me add a variant now for the second variant, okay, for the first variant, I can come in here for the first variant. I might just move this picture away. It will. So let me just move it away this way. Usually this one works more with PNG. Okay. So I'll just, have this so if i select this and i come in here select this i can say unclick this uh unclick again this that's just what we did so it's not nothing much okay yes we we on the other one we moved the mask away okay when we do preview okay there we i never add the variant that will allow us to it so let's move these guys away Let's go and look for the variant. Sorry, the main asset. That should be Figma to point oh, I'm not tired. Yes. This is it here. So I drop this here and I click, it comes in, click, it goes away, click, it comes in, click, it goes away. Just something like that. Okay. So it's always like that. Now, if I want this thing to move in from here, I move it down. Just understand the idea, not the, because the likelihood of you. A, a company calling you to do something like this is, is not realistic. Instead, if you understand the idea, you can now use it to do exactly what you want. Okay. Um, the next thing we want to do here is uh, shaping. Uh, you can use shaping to shape things and create logos or any other thing you want. They are very important tools. Okay. So anytime you draw any shape, okay. <laughs> Anytime you draw any shape from here, okay, or using the pen tool. Yes. Yeah. So anytime you draw any shape from here using the pen tool or any shape from here, except images, you can combine them, subtract them, union them, or intersect. So if I draw a circle here, and I want like... Um, Okay, let me draw the famous Android logo. So the famous Android logo, you have like a head here, 
then you have a rectangle okay also when you see shapes when you see shapes or logos try break them down okay so try break them down let's let's take a look at this one okay let's just bring this guy in okay so let me do this let me paste this here okay so let's assume i want to do something like this now we can see that this guy right here there are a lot of ways to do this so but this could just be one way of doing it i can come in here to get this to achieve this i can draw a rectangle okay but here i'll come and give them different border radius but here let me make this 100 and make this 100 okay and for here let me make this 25 25 seems to be much let's go with 16 and 16. okay now to create this cutout you see this cutout i can draw a rectangle across like this okay now if i want to deceive myself i'll go ahead and give it black then i'll be like hey i don't cut that out but if you carry this to a white background you will see that even your cutout is laughing at you you can clearly see that it's a black uh, line you didn't cut anything out except you want to deceive yourself again you will now select it and the white it, <laughs> and then you now you have hey i don't cut that out <laughs> But that is where this shaping tools comes in, okay? So what you can now do is to select the two of them. Come in here. You can see this only appears when you select two or more shapes. Now, I'm not telling you, showing you all these things. So you can go, no, you might likely never use them at this stage. But have an idea of what they are. Sometimes the issue you might face is not even knowing that some things are possible. I used to have one... Uh, corridor teachers back in those days, you know, when he was teaching me. When I now went to one place, one popular place, in, uh, because sometimes there are some flyers I will see, like all those winners chapel flyers. If I show him and say, let's do this, he'll tell me, no, no, no. These ones, they do it in Photoshop. You cannot achieve this effect in corridor. Instead of him to tell me, I, I don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So when I now went to somewhere, one printing press, they call it a tank. I now saw designers doing all this effect. I was like, hey, that was when I now knew that ah, this man knows how to do this thing. Now, sometimes not being exposed to some certain things might make you think they are not possible in this particular app. But that's why I'm showing you that they are possible. So in case you want to cut things out. So for something like this now, I can just come in here. They only appear when you select two or more. Now, if I deselect and select one, you won't see it. You can only see the mask and the rest, okay? So, but if I select these two now, you will see it here. So, I can come in here and I can say subtract. You can see the way I've subtracted. When I click on subtract, it has removed this shape from this. So, now I have this. The next thing is these two guys, okay? These two guys, I can draw okay and make them 100 percent now i can just use my rotation 45 degree bring it here Control d and let's put this one at minus 45 and then move it somewhere here now again if i want to deceive myself let me do some alignment I can select this to control G and align them with this. Now, again, if I want to deceive myself, let me select those two things and align them at the top. Let them meet at the top. Okay. Again, if I want to deceive myself, I'll be like, yes, if since they are the same color, it don't blend, it don't gel. Now, if I move this, you could see say it no gel. Now, I also don't want to group them together. Instead, I want them to be one object. What do I do? I select this, select this, and I can come here and I'll say union. Union will weld them together. So union, 
now I can move everything all together. Remember, this is not grouping. If you check here, you can see that this is basically welding. It is now a union, right? So you can go ahead and give this a color. So the same thing, that's the same way you do this, the same way you do this, you combine them, you weld them. Now, let me explain them in detail so that you can understand what each and every one of them does. Then we can just do a quick exercise again. Okay? We are just uh, two classes ahead. We're almost done. So let me draw two shapes again. Let's draw this one. So since we are in Ramadan, let's make a half moon. So this is one of our moon. Then we have another one. Let's give this one. Let me just give it red. Now you can see right now, this blue part is giving us the half moon. Okay, so I can just select this, select these two, and come in here, subtract the red one, and yeah, you have the half moon right there. So there are a lot of things you could do. Okay, there are a lot of things you could do if you see old NMPC logo. You can see when you want to create something like this. If you look at this well, you can basically see that this is a circle with a bunch of what repeating rectangles. So if you want to create something like this, you can draw a rect a circle. Okay, you draw a circle, and so anytime you see a shape or a logo, please see beyond the ones at the top. Look at them, break them down. So I can draw this rectangle now select these two align them properly right and for here okay for this one i'm just going to do this let me control d okay duplicate control d uh i want to set the anchor point i don't want to go and start downloading figma this thing now figma uh what's it called plugin now to set i, I also don't want to constrain I just want to do this in a very simple way. Okay. Control D, bring this here. If you use constraint, it will be faster. And I also think this is, uh, let me do one, two, three, four, five. Control D. Okay. Uh, Control D. How did you achieve this, Lisa? I'm just duplicating. It, okay. So you can actually duplicate and rotate. Ru right. duplicate and rotate. Yes. Yes, that's what I'm doing. So now I select all of them now and come in here and union. So I have something like this. Okay. So there are a lot of things you could do with these guys, but like I said, let me explain them in details so you can understand them. So let me do another one. Uh, and the good thing about Figma, when you have these shapes, it still gives you properties to rotate them. <laughs> yes, so you can also do logo designs in Figma. It gives you properties to rotate them and still add corner radius. So like this corner radius now, if I go ahead and add like, let's say 24, I'll have this kind of effect, okay? Now, like I said, immediately you design, you have two elements. It comes up. The first one, union. I'm sure I did all these things so that explain them at a, at a stretch will not give you mental of, uh, information overload. Already you understand union. Yes, sir. You understand subtract. Now, these two other guys, they are opposite of each other. Intersect will give you the shape where those guys intersect. As you are looking at this shape, you can clearly see the intersection point in this middle. Those of you that this set are waiting, which, which mass when they do all those intersections? Yes, yes. Right? So this will give you this, the shape right at the intersection point. So if I click on intercept, uh, intersect, it will give me this shape where these two shapes meet. If you click exclude, it will remove the part where these two shapes meet. 
So if I do intersect, I'm just going to have this boring thing here. But that's just what intersect is. Control Z. If I do exclude, I'll have an empty hole right there. You might ask, eh, so what do you want do? Who won't pay? Right? Who won't pay for it? You can use this, this for a whole lot of things. This is a logo already. <laughs> it's a logo now. They this don't pay logo already. <laughs> All of them are logo. So you can intersect things. You can now let's assume I want to draw a let's say leave. Hey, let's imagine how this government school. See what they did first. Now let's assume I want to get this shape now, and I can't get this shape easily. What I can also do, I'm just showing you different techniques. I know I can. They, what shape do they look like? If you look at it well, what's the closest shapes you are seeing here? Is it not like a circle? Or even like a triangle or whatever. But let's go here and pick like an ellipse. Now I can probably draw my yam yam kind of ellipse, not perfect ellipse, and duplicate it. Okay, let me just do this so we can see it. And let me add a stroke instead, so mm -hmm. we can actually see where they they are intersecting. Stroke. So you can see the intersection point right wow. here. I can select the two of them to get that sh uh, leaf shape. I can come in here and just tell it to give me the intersection points. Right? Uh, don't worry. If I give it, I didn't give it a color. That's why. So let's go back here and give them the color. Okay. I just remove the color so you can see it. So now the intersection points, we have this. So you can see how I created this, this kind of shape. Uh, if we come in here now and give it that uh, all those kind of green, okay. Select it, control D, rotate it the other way, and uh, uh, yeah. go collect all those uh, Instagram vendors money, right? You collect their twenty k for 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 ten minutes. Yes. Uh, 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 stainless, stainless organic. Who they love? Uh, what's the name of this font? Oh, yeah, organic cream logo don't set. Okay. If I don't want to be doing this, I can actually expand it, but I don't want to expand it. That's a, a class for you to go and explain. Oh yeah, Stellas Agandik is, in, is back in business. So this is basically what you want to do on shaping tools. Now, there is one that I really like that uh, always mesmerize people. Now, this one you see it on a lot of websites. They will do something like this, draw, a rectangle like this okay draw another one like this and select these three okay center them and weld them union now it doesn't look like much it doesn't look like much is going on okay until the magic happens let's do 24 so now we have the magic. And if you do this, when you start moving this, you start having this kind of uh, shapes. 
you can just come in here. You can see the way. So the more you increase this, uh, let's select it, increase this. If you make it even 50 or 100, the more it looks like it's, you know, it's kind of elastic. So you are going to see this a lot. Yes, you can also use it for animation. Maybe something you just, uh, you just push, boom, okay, liquid drop. Push. So it could be like on your splash screen. And then you just do it and they'll be like, ah, this guy don't bad, this guy don't bad. Maybe just three months. You just tell them, well, uh, I've, been, I've been doing that since. Now, there's this new kind of design they call bento box so let's take a look at bento hero pages and if you also take a look at our stream three stream three flyer design we use the bento design style so you always see this kind of interesting kind of um, design but here is where some people get creative with this there are some that would chop this design. Um, they, there's a way they would chop out some part of the rectangle. If you want to get it, you will shape out your life. And it will not be the same. Dribble. Dribble with 3B. So sometimes, like this bento, this bento kind of grid, the way they will shape the, they will shape one of the rectangles. Uh, let's search for hero section. I'm trying to see if I can, if I can see. It, it's a design trend that it rained last year well, well. They were using it to confuse people. okay see it something like this okay something like this you see the way they cut out this shape let me show you another one so you have to know them so that you can easily recreate it if that's the style or the aesthetics you are going for uh, like i said the worst thing you want to do okay see it again uh -huh. this kind of effect Although this one, no, uh, anyway, the person said, the person did like Nigeria, man, let's talk about like that. But you see this kind of effect, right? If you see them, you, they will, you go crack your head tight, you know, go get that. But it's just simple. So all you do is you get your shape, okay? Yes, you get your shape. You get your shape, and if you finish getting your shape, you get the cutout. Okay, maybe the cutout control D. Let's cut it out right here. And let me just give this another color so we know what we are doing. And also, we want to cut it out from here. Okay, so let's select them out. Uh, let's select them. And let's do our subtract. So you can see we've done our subtract, but it's not looking anything like this smooth curve here. Okay. So what you now do is to just select it, go and add border radius. Depending on the size you want, uh, let's go 25. Let's go zero. Let's go eight. Okay. So you can see you now have that curve right there. So you can just drop. Now, here is the thing now. How do you put an image inside this guy? That is why we did this thing line by line. You know, the way I've arranged it. You know, this is a shape. This is a shape. It obviously can't have picture, okay? So let's assume I have a picture. Except you want to use picture background. But what I want, I want this picture to have this liberty. I don't want to use picture background that I can't move except I go to crop. I will just bring this. 
okay and just make sure who is this now who is this and just make sure that the subtract is under select and add my mask now you can see what i've done eh? then we can't say if it's easy don't work so yeah so this not is about easy. Uh, not easy, <laughs> not easy. <laughs> so from here i can actually use this for a design desktop desktop okay let me bring this control d drop it right inside here okay increase the size okay select my desktop i like when you guys see these things you can actually know that okay they are not that difficult select this white i want to go with like a blue kind of blue ish there and in here still that blue but black ish and i probably want to put this right here maybe increase this yeah then i can draw a large blue here this one i can go with uh, not linear but diamond uh, let's use angular okay i can go with blue i can add red i can add yellow i can add another red and i can add maybe somewhere clearly Oh, let's change it to diamond. Okay, let's go to angular. And for this, I want to go ahead and add an effect that layer blur, blow it to about 400 right there. Just come in here, put it there. This one should be at the top, bring to front. Now, let's start making use of most of what we've done. Okay. So, okay. Okay, uh, let's come in here. Design. Did you talk? And uh, increase. We have the digital code. We have uh, probably maybe so. Uh, so I'm already working on something like a simple, uh, a simple. So I'm already working like on a simple. Uh, landing page right here. Don't forget when you are doing something that is important. Yes, a simple grid section. Always add your grid. But I just wanted to show you guys use case for this. Uh, you can have fifty uh, k plus strong community. Okay, fifty k plus strong community. now okay uh you have strong community right there strong community um let's go ahead and make this one uh um 64. is the line spacing let's use 56. Six. Okay. If I wanted to add a picture there, I might want to also reduce this. Okay. Um, so I can just put this here. Let me reduce that. That's about 129, 130. So 50K strong community. So for this one, this strong community, I might just reduce the opacity by, let's say, 50%. Okay. So you can just write something else here. 
and after writing whatever you want there you can say uh what should i use what should i use get digitoken so get digitoken shift a we are going to make it feel let's give it a, a blue and kind of bright uh okay let's give it this bridal range let's give it some padding 32 16 and 100 Let me increase this to 44. I want a very large uh, distance here. Okay, so you probably do some designs, maybe you do some write up here, but you can see how we've used this. Now, probably in the animation, in the prototype, or you can just tell the developer, you probably want maybe this thing to be like a, something that wobbles, you know, it could just be anything. But I'm just giving you these ideas. Okay, uh, so I want to do all these things so you guys can practice over uh, over the weekend. Remember, next week this is our last class. No class, no class tomorrow. This is our last class. We are coming back next two weeks. So next week is our holiday. We are coming back next two weeks to do some other things uh, to start our practical class. So we'll be doing uh, this one probably won't be good. I mean, do with uh, media okay just for so the person asking of fonts uh what to do, do now because the two of them are just too bold it's looking somehow because this strong community is not uh, uh you can book your clarity any uh, clarity call anytime now we don't cancel and when you want book i book anytime right? <laughs> okay sorry guys just give me three more minutes <laughs> just give me three more minutes to explain the last one Okay, the last one being this guy, the pen tool. Okay, that's the last one here. Uh, although we didn't do anything on luminosity, but I think we'll still do it later on. But uh, luminosity simply means changing the blending mode, like this particular circle here. I can come in here and change the blend mode. Okay, you can see if I go darken, you can see the effect right there. Let me go uh, soft light. Uh, you might not see screen. It's actually something is happening, but you might not see it. Let me use something more obvious. Okay. Sometimes you can have a color like this. Let's color it. Let's just do green. If you come in here, you can change the blend mode, darken. You can see the effect there. If you choose multiply. So this first four, we kind of add black. To whatever is interacting under these ones we add white to whatever it is is interacting with under these ones we add gray to whatever it is is interacting with under these ones we we invert the color of whatever it is in, is interacting under and this one will change whatever color you have on top it will make it it will give it to the underlining layers right saturation colors and luminosity so if you use color or hue you can see right now, anywhere you drop this, you are going to have this screen. So it's important you know them, even if you are not going to use them, but they just help in adding some efficiency to your design, okay? So let me just drop this somewhere around here. But no, we want it to, we want these guys to be on top. Okay, so that's another layer there. So the last thing I want to do now is the pen tool. Now, everyone, you are going to watch and we'll practice it because this pen tool now with practice, you get better. I'm just introducing it now, but with practice, that's the only time you get better, okay? Uh, I'm not liking this thing. Okay, let me leave it. It's not like I'm using it. So the way you use the pen tool is this. Watch carefully, you. Now yeah. the pen tool yeah. is... Yes? Sir. Yes? Please, uh, before you proceed, sir, you said you don't yeah. like something there. 
I please can you share the way you used to picture something and you know that you don't like it? There's no way you, 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 you can like see something. that. Uh, okay, when I say I don't like a particular thing, it's not contrasting enough for me. It's almost like blending into the background. So it's not looking like a button that people are going to click. Because buttons needs to stand out. So I'll probably use a more high contrast color because of this design I have going on here. Okay. Now, like I told you guys, some of these things, the more you design, that is why we'll be replicating design. Don't worry, your brain is picking them up, but also help your brain to be making conscious efforts. Okay. So if you are looking at a particular design, you should know the components and know exactly which one is more important. You want that important one to always stand out. Okay. So that's what we are looking at right here. So for the pen tool, the way you do it is very easy but can also be hard. If you pick your pen tool, you basically draw shapes using anchor points, okay? So if I want to draw a straight line, if I click and move, you can see this thing following me. It's basically asking me, okay, where should we stop? Now, if you want it to be straight, hold down shift, you can see right now I'm holding shift. If I'm moving, it's just going to be perfect, okay? But if I remove my hand from shift, uh, it might not be perfect, except I'm trying to do something like this, okay? But let's say shift. Now, if I want this line to stop here, I'll click. Once I click, if I move, you can see it's following me. If I'm done design, uh, if I'm done tracing or drawing, I hold down control and then I click. Now I can stop, but you can see I can continue. But if this is all I want to do, I want to come to here and click on done. Shikina. Now let me draw another thing. Let me draw something obvious. Let's draw a rectangle. You click, you move, you click. I'm holding down shift. You click. Then you probably want to use this your soft grid to know exactly when you come back here. You click, then you go up. Now, if it is a complete shape, you can see it has stopped. You are not, it's no longer moving. So when you start from a particular point and you don't come back, it's not considered a closed curve. So it's, you have to click on control to stop. But when it's a, a complete shape like this, once you come back to the beginning point where you started, it automatically close, right? So triangle, you do this, you do this, and you come back here hey, okay you do that right but please and please and please and no one catch anybody using this pen tool to draw circle and to draw rectangle and to draw triangle if now waiting you won't draw okay you can see now because i didn't click done before drawing this one they basically matched together okay so take note of that so when you are done with a particular one a particular shape a single shape make sure you click on done if what you want to draw is a rectangle, triangle, please, a triangle or a rectangle or a circle, come and pick them from here, okay? But the pen tool is essential for draw. If also what you want to draw is just a straight line, come and pick line. Hold down, uh, shift and draw. That's a line for you, okay? But the pen tool is important when trying to draw different shapes. Now, another thing with the pen tool is when you want a curve, you click, hold. Now, you can see if I come here, instead of just clicking, I click, hold, and drag. Now I've curved, okay? Then I can hold down shift to change my direction. I can hold down control to tell it, okay, I want to continue the next one here, okay? And you keep drawing, oops. You keep drawing, okay? When you are done, you click again, you hold down control, and you stop. Okay, so depend on what you want to do. Another way to have curves is to click, draw your straight lines first, and then you can use the curve, the bend tool. Come here and you can simply bend this. So you can bend this around. This is the way I prefer doing my curves, okay? So let's assume in, I'm designing something and there are some simple, simple illustrations that I want to include. Example is this picture right here. Let's assume I want to retrace this picture because I want to show people 
that I'm a bad guy. I can just bring in this picture now. Use your God-given eyes to guess where the point is. So I might have to lock this so I don't easily move it. So if I pick my pen tool, I can start with the mouth. Okay, sometimes you want to get the body, the main frame, but this is not an illustration class. So we just do it sharply, sharply. So let's get this. Okay, I'm trying to get the main shape, but I'm not going to worry about curves now. I just told you that you can worry about curves later. I'm just looking at the points where the curves starts from. Okay, so you can see here, we can do this. So we can curve in there. We can also come here. We can come here, curve in later. We can come here, curve in later. Draw, draw. Now we can come here, we'll curve later. Come here, curve later. Come here, curve later. Yeah, I know some of you on our head won't blow. Don't worry. You can always rewatch, but you guys are going to practice after this, okay? Then drop this. Now you can see if I click on done, I can go to fill and color this guy now, okay? But I don't want to color it yet. So to go back inside, I can just double click on it. Then this guy comes back again. So I'll now come inside here and start using my bend tool to bend, to bend. Okay, bending things like bend, bend. You can see, I'm bending things there. I am the last straight line bender. So bend it, okay. Shape bender. Bend, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so bending things just there like that. Now you can adjust all these things to fine tune them, okay? But I'm just doing a rough work, you know? Teacher is the one that will do the rough work and, I, and give you to do the perfect work. So I'm gonna not blame you. That's why I chose this fashion. <laughs> okay, so now I can also bend them here. Now you can see how I got this uh, guy. So I can come in here. And the, 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 the distance is not even much. So if I want them on the same shape, I obviously don't want them on the same shape. So I'll just come here. This one is not even hard. This one is just like this. This one is just like this. And like this, come back here, close. But because two of them, they are together, I won't click done. I want to continue, you know, drawing because two of them are the same color. But if you wanted them separately, you click on done. So I can easily come in here, no stroke. I don't want a stroke. Instead, I want a fill. And that fill is that guy. Uh, uh, this fill here. OK, good. OK. So if you want to also draw the peak, I can also come in here. Perfect. Pick my tool. Remove the stroke. OK, this one. Don't come and use pen tool for this. Use your normal ellipse to and draw your yam here. Okay, give it color black. And then we'll probably select the main shape now, the main guy. Uh, give it color green. Let me just copy. Okay, let's just go ahead and give it color green. So now we have our little bird. Okay, now we have our dog. So we can now group it. If we want now, we can easily animate our dock. Okay, since they are now shapes, individual shapes. So yeah, that's how you use the pen tool. But before I go, we are literally done. 
before I go, I'll watch you guys draw a straight line with a pen too because now they are at the start. So if you are online, if you're on Figma, get a frame. If you're on Figma, get a frame, give it a name. Give it a name, okay? Just get a frame. I did not say get a frame and put a picture inside. Just get a frame. Okay. Now, make sure you name that frame. Give it your name so I can actually know who is doing nonsense. <laughs> who is this? Omotaya, this is your frame. <laughs> you won't collect everybody's face. Eh? Anyway, it's fine. <laughs> oh my god you don't want to take who is this lazy designer madra mochi christopher get what should we your do? own frame eh? get your own frame you are carrying another person with my own frame to come and pick it just imagine okay once you get your own frame uh i want you to pick the pen tool and draw a straight line a straight diagonal line okay pick the pen tool and draw a straight line remember you click you hold down shift, you move and click again. Some people will draw curve, trust me, and some people will draw bent line. I'm going to be zooming in now. I'm not tired. Unmute your mic if you are confused so that uh, you can let me know what your issues. I've unmuted my mic, sir. I have, what is the problem? <laughs> uh, it is used to follow me every time. <laughs> oh right, yeah, come to come towards the left side so that we can have a longer line. Now left be that. I mean a right. Left. Move ahead. I right, click. Hold on your shift. It. Okay. Have you have you heard that shift? Yes. Now click again. I've clicked. Uh -huh. So you can see you've drawn a line. So if yes. you wanted to keep drawing, that's how you keep moving. But right now, we just want a straight line. So to stop drawing, hold down control and click. Okay. Then you can see it has stopped following you. Then if you look up, you see where you have done. So you have to yes. click on that done to tell it that you are done with this particular shape. If not, I'll if you don't click that on that, it. no, I'll no need. Just no, control. no, 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 no need. Just go and click on done. If you don't click on done, any other subsequent thing you draw oh. will still be part of this shape. Okay. So this is how to draw an open shape, right? Now let's try, try drawing a rectangle for me. Any rectangle. Now hold, click, hold and shift. I'm coming, sir. Okay. I'm coming, sir. Okay. Click, okay. Now move, hold and shift, click again. Okay. I'm not seeing it. Yet. Click, click. I click. Now hold down shift, move away and click again. I should move away. Yes, okay. now just then move down okay. and click again, holding down shift so that it will be straight. No, you are moving down too much. Just go up small. Uh, when you are doing your own, you can draw any size. Now move left, uh, left now. Still holding down shift. Then you click again. Then go back to where you started from. Make sure you started, you go back there and you, so that it clicks. Click again. Then you have your right closed click. right. No, click. I never mentioned right click. I've clicked. Then you have your shape. So click out, click on done. Okay. So you can color this, color it red. Give it a few color red, let's see. This outline of fill color red. Yes. Okay. I never see them. But like I said, don't come and use the pen tool to be drawing. Uh, but I'm still having, I'm still having issue on this fake line. 
even if I'm using it particularly, I didn't get it in most cases. That's the reason why I want to practice it now before we uh, end the uh, I draw a, a triangle for me. Let me see. I'm not going to help you out. Draw a triangle. <laughs> okay, let me draw so that you repeat after me. Draw a triangle. Like this. Like this. Hey, so repeat this thing. Repeat this shape. I didn't get it. Can you draw a triangle with a pencil? Yes. So why are you clicking and dragging? Click, move, move. You are dragging the thing. Okay, I've clicked. Move. I should click again. Have you moved? Yes. You are, how many points does the triangle have? Three. So why are you still in the same place? If I click on it, the thing is disappearing. How will it disappear? Not I. See now. Omotaya, if I pick my pen to and I click one, two, okay. three, four. What is okay. difficult here? And I add a fill. Okay. One. 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 Are you just moving or you are clicking? Uh, after moving, I will click. So why am I not seeing the, the design? Anyway. Bye bye. Because <laughs> you're obviously not clicking. Who is this? Who is this? Who is doing this big selection here? Okay, so Chebuk, I can see your own. Anyway, uh, so this thing takes practice. Okay, but the practice, I mean, it's not uh, the practice of someone trying to learn how to uh, 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 drive a plane. Okay, so you can always go back, rewatch the videos and practice. Now, uh, to, to make sure you understand this pen too well, to show me that you understand it, uh, within the week, try and make sure you redraw this paper this doc, retrace this doc for me. So that's the way to show mastery. Omota, you've not drawn anything. Though. So honestly, I don't get it. Honestly. I Omota, I didn't know what a click is. I know what a click is, sir. Oh yeah, click. I've clicked now. Move and now click I again. Click. I should click the game. Go to Google Meet and share your screen. Okay. Okay, that one might be another wala. You might not know how to share screen. Come back here and click. Screen, I want to see your Figma screen. All right, sir. Uh, so connect and share your screen. Have you seen it, sir? It's coming up. I'm seeing it. All right, sir. Now, one more time. Sir? I, I, I click. Okay. Then I drag. 
and click. I should on click now. I said click. So when I click, I hold on the click, then and drag. Now that is the issue. Since we've been here, did you hear me say hold on drag? Okay. Click. Hmm. Click. Click. Thank you, sir. Remove your screen. <laughs> oh my god thank you sir uh, when you drag you you to turn to a curve i told you guys earlier but i also told you not to use that method now as you are starting that method is going to be confusing you instead if you need a curve just draw a straight line and after drawing a straight line you can go and pick the bend tool and then come click hold the drag if you bend. Anybody else having issue? Uh, we are done for today. If you have something doing, you can go. But if you have, I still have like five minutes with you guys. So if you have issue, let me know. Victor, what's the problem? I said I was disconnected when you were doing the, uh, the stuff, so I don't understand what you are doing presently. Uh, well, and I've even finished doing whatever it is I'm doing. Okay, later I can just rewatch the video. But we are basically when when did you where were when were you disconnected? You don't take no, not long. It's after you finish on this um page that you did this um 50k like stuff, sure. That was oh, where yes. I got disconnected. Oh yeah, share that... your screen. Share your screen. What do you say, sir? Share your screen. Share your screen. Ah, uh, I'm using my phone to watch the class while I'm using my system to like do the feedback. Okay. Uh, get a frame. Get a frame. Get a frame. So we're just practicing. I've done that, sir. Where are you there? What is your name for feedback? Olale Victor. Yes, sir. Okay. Which kind of pen? You go carry line two. Not be line two with that. I be pencil two. You go carry pencil two. Pick the pen two, not the pencil two. Okay, sir. Okay. So the pencil two allows you to draw lines using anchor points. So point by point, point by point. So have you picked the two? So come back to your frame. So let's start to draw a straight line. Yes. So to, yes. So to draw a straight line, click, click. Yeah. Okay, sir. Hold down shift, then move and click again. Then you have a straight line. Okay. I got so that, if, you, uh, if you want to stop drawing, because if you notice, if you move, you see that uh line following you right yes if you want to stop drawing you hold down control and click okay sir you can see it has stopped following you then if you are done with this you make sure you click on done up that blue done button okay yes yes yeah. if you don't click on it any other thing you keep drawing with the pen to me it will be part of this same shape there will be like one. Okay, but sir. If you, want, if, if you want to draw another shape entirely that is independent of this particular one, you have to click on done, then draw it again. So we, you can use the pen tool for a whole lot of things. Another thing I did for, we said, okay, just to show that you have more mastery of the pen tool, you can draw a closed shape. This one now is an open-ended uh, shape. So you can see it didn't close it. You didn't close the, sh the shape. So let's try drawing a closed shape. Let's try drawing a rectangle. So pick the pen tool again. Click. Now hold down control, move. Click again. Now hold down control. You should know where to move. It's a rectangle we are drawing. You should, okay, click again. Hold down control, move. Click again. Now you see, you see that line guiding you to tell you that you are that. that yes, 
then go back to where you started from click again you should join make sure it's exactly good now click on done so color it red so this is a closed shape that means you can color it but if it is an open shape you can't color it so closed shapes you can color them for open shapes that are just lines you can add an outline to them color it's red any color is fine and then uh we now said for the tracing you just have to rewind the video later and watch how i was able to use it to trace that papa even a papa did they call this yes so basically that's how you use the pen tool to draw stuff you can use it for tracing it could be that you have an image and you just want to you know trace it you use it but if you want to remove background oh. please use the remove background the plugin or if you see their web website don't come and explain to to remove background uh miriam any question uh are definitely tell me any question Moby christopher any I have question? a question. I will talk to you. Olu Akimbo, any question? Tommy Thomas, any question? I Roy, your question. Then we'll call no, you sir, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Uh, Roy. Okay. So my, my question is for example, eh, if we are tracing something, yes. and uh, maybe we where we want to position the distance before clicking, we didn't position it there. Can, can we go back like can we go back to i don't know if you understand my issue with this your question now i don't know what you mean by something and this thing <laughs> okay what <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> okay what, what for example and uh, for example uh, okay. this this doc now that you this image this doc image now yeah now maybe i'm I want to trace it then maybe mm. where where i want to put my where for example now where i want to put my nose is this second example an example inside your example sorry where where i want to put my node this uh, this pom 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 stance yes maybe that's not the exact place i want to mm. place it mm. but i have i have already clicked then yeah. you know when, when i move again it will take it will the line we still show so i want to ask a question can you we... can just delete you can just delete okay you can just delete it okay yeah. no like even no do control z. Okay, you can okay, okay. control z but okay. if it is that you have already finished okay yeah you can just double click on it then you get back to the editing mode okay Mm. so all those points all those nodes you can delete them and by double them. by double clicking right uh, let us know you already done you already clicked on done you can just come back and double click you go back to design mode, edit mode okay okay yes okay, okay like this okay mm -hmm. okay uh so guys this is all right but there are a lot of techniques and stuff but it's not now this is not a graphic design class okay so it's it's uh it's not a graphic design class but the more you practice these things you get better at it and you know you start creating amazing things but remember that any design you see out there you can actually create them okay so for those of us Okay, what we are going to do, go on and go on and tell everybody. We don't want anybody to come and blame us. Okay. I know some students that will say, if only I had access to that booking one-on-one, -on -one, I would have been better. So starting today, we are going to paste the link. Everybody, if you have issues, you can book one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> eh? I know if some of you say, if only I had that one chance. I knew that was how I gave up on you. If I had had that one chance to book that one on one, I would have been bad. So, 
uh, we don't want that situation okay so we are going to drop the booking link especially this week that we are not going to be having a class if you have any issue right you can book a one-on-one -on -one. so we'll take a look at your problem but if on closer look and your problem is from the village i have a friend that is into mini importation he imports wigs and stuff like that i can mm -hmm. link you up so you can you can check in fact you can even do milky donuts it's trending now milky donuts and uh, but i'm sure anyone can decide if you can think well you can right? if you can if you can solve two plus two you can decide, right if you really want to you really want to anyway um uh, good night so let me disconnect our life i should have disconnected this life since so you don't tell me what finish class you are welcome you're welcome bye 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 bye, bye, bye. So see you guys. I hope all these clapping people are clapping. I hope people are left.